I'm Roger Simonoff, and thanks for taking a peek at this introduction to voicing and tap tuning. In 2006, I published The Art of Tap Tuning that included an accompanying 45-minute DVD. The text fully described how to voice and tap tune acoustic string instruments. The video included numerous live demonstrations on changing aperture size, brace configurations, finding resonant frequencies of air chambers, the contribution of the air chamber's voice to the overall sound of the instrument, using strobe tuners for precise results, a live demo on tuning tone bars, and much more. For the past two years, I worked diligently on updating both the book and the video. And in February of 2022, I published the second edition of The Art of Tap Tuning and its accompanying now 55-minute online video. The revised text and video dive deep into the art of voicing and tap tuning. They eliminate the mystique and show precisely how tap tuning and voicing are done. I am confident that the content will contribute greatly to every luthier's goal of building great sounding acoustic string instruments. I thought I'd provide you with a preview of three sections of the video. One section that demonstrates the importance of aperture size, one that shows the contribution of the air chamber's voice to the instrument's overall tone, and one that demonstrates tuning mandolin tone bars to their target notes. The same tuning phenomena occurs in the air chambers on a mandolin. Uh, this is a lore signed F5 mandolin, and I'm going to use a piece of cardboard again and change the resonant frequency of its air chamber by just closing and opening the F-holes. And this is the issue of, again, tuning the apertures, getting the aperture to the right size. Uh, just to review, when the aperture is made smaller, if you could make the aperture smaller, and you can do that by binding the inside of it, one way to treat that. When the aperture is made smaller, the resonant frequency drops. As the aperture is made larger, the resonant frequency is made higher. And there is one ideal place for every size air chamber that most powerfully allows that air chamber to respond. Okay, we're here with Peter Morin. We're going to take a look at, uh, at this dreadnought guitar that Peter has with him and, and try to evaluate the contribution of the air chamber, the tuning of the air chamber, as it relates to how the whole instrument sounds, the entire timbre of the instrument. This particular instrument has a, um, an air chamber tuned to a G. So let's hear that. That's pretty right on to the G, especially the G that the guitar is tuned to. I'm going to ask Peter to play a G, C, and D chord, um, do just a 1, 4, 5 on this, so that we can listen to the chords and hear if any of them seem to have any more or less power or sustain than the others. Peter? I think as you listen to that, you'll still hear this contribution of the G that's present. And that G is behind everything he's playing, even though we can hear the frequency of the strings, this G is also part of the overall character of the instrument. Let's play a few riffs and hear that G. Thanks, Peter. This is the mandolin we're going to use for these tests. It has a bass bar that's tuned to an A sharp. And I'm going to use this earlier model Con strobe tuner. It has a single wheel display, and it's also not as brightly backlit as some of the newer models are. And therefore, it'll record a little bit better for these images. We're going to go out through a Behringer CS100 compressor. I have the level and the sustain set to maximum. And I have the tone and the attack set a little bit lower than half. And we're coming out through a simple cardioid microphone that goes through the compressor into the strobe tuner. So again, we're going to do the bass bar on this mandolin, and let's see what happens. So let's begin by shaving down the ends of the tone bars. 
and get them down to an airy thinness where they meet the soundboard. Taking about an inch and a half, I guess, of length here off the end of the soundboard. And turn the instrument around to do the other side. Being careful not to slip and either cut ourselves or cut into the soundboard. Let's see if that's uh, had any effect here. Yeah, it's so the tone bars now changed the resonant frequency and lowered it. So I've lowered the sense wheel so that the image would be still. Here's a block plane here now to remove some overall height from the board. If we did this with chisels, we, we could put a scallop shape in the braces, which is fine. And let's see what's happened to the tuning here. Uh, the resonant frequency has dropped again. So we lower the sense bar until we get the wheel to appear to stop turning. And let's remove a little bit more wood from the end of the, of the bar. Remember now that removing wood from the ends of the tone bar changes the resonant frequency slowly. And as you remove wood from the center of the tone bar, you change the resonant frequency quickly, which is what I was doing when working with the block plane. Okay, let's use this block plane again to remove quite a bit more wood from the tone bar. We had to go from A sharp, which is where we started, and our, we're going to be seeking an A flat on this tone bar. We're done. We can just clean up the edge a little bit, try to round the shape of the tone bar bit. You would use a hand chisel for that. And we'll check the resonant frequency again. Drop quite a bit. Quite a bit. In fact, so much, we're going to now go down to A and turn the sense wheel up to plus 50 cents. It was at minus 50 cents. That's better. When we were at A sharp, we finally got down to A sharp minus 50 cents. Move some more wood here from the, from the bar. Check the tuning again. Yeah, it's changed. Oops, I went the wrong way on the knob there. Let's, there we go. So, resonant frequency has dropped quite a bit. And we want to get this bar down to an A or a little bit flat of an A before we start working on the other bar. But we can see we've made a major change in this just by uh, these few shapings that we've done here of the bar. So as you remove wood from the tone bars or braces, the resonant frequency gets lower. The process is really pretty simple. And the process is identical for backboards that are unbraced. You remove wood from the backboard by scraping or by planing or by sanding wood from the backboard. And as you remove wood from the backboard, the resonant frequency of the backboard also gets lower. I hope you are intrigued by tap tuning and are eager to learn more. The Art of Tap Tuning 2nd Edition is available from Better Lithery Shops and directly from us. And the new video can be streamed to your devices to view anytime and any place via a secure access code that is provided in each book.